Some of you might remember during our previous trip to the Philippines, I decided to put some new shock absorbers on our car. I'm heading to town today to see if I can find some shock absorbers for this car. If I can even get shocks for this car here without having to go all the way to Tacloban. Aside from the trouble I went through not only to locate shocks for the car, I felt I got lucky when I found a shop that could actually handle the task at hand. When they informed me that they did not have the shocks in stock and would have to shop around, I should have known it would all be pointless, and it was. Just after arriving this time, we made a trip with friends down to the Maslog Cold Springs in Gondara the first week that we arrived. And those new shocks not only could not handle the roads, they gave out completely on the way home. Halfway back during the trip, the car was actually bottoming out and the fender wall was scraping the tires. Most of the blame on the road conditions here, much of the blame has to go on the one who decided to put low profile tires on this car. When I asked my brother-in-law two years ago to put some new tires on the car, he took it upon himself to cherry out the car by replacing the original 14 inch rims with 15 inch rims and low profile tires. While it did look nice, the quality of the ride was drastically changed, which resulted in the shocks and front struts being destroyed. So I replaced the shocks and struts at Prulab during our last visit, only to have the shocks fail here some six months later. Come to find out, they were the poorest quality stocks Prulab could possibly find. I should have known better to trust my instincts, but after spending a half a day looking for a shop, I was just relieved to get the job done. Now that we are back home and the shocks have completely failed, it was time to find another shop, and as luck would have it, we were referred to a place called King's Auto in Cowboyug. With quality shocks in stock, I ordered up some new shocks, and in order to prevent them from being torn up again, we also decided to replace the low profile rough riders with the correct size wheels. We took it a step further and got the custom mag 14 inch wheels and all new tires all around. And what a difference that made. It was like a new car again. While we waited on new tires to be balanced and mounted, we poked around the shop some more to learn about what services they offered. We enjoyed some complimentary coffee and got to know the people. Hi! <laughs> Overall, I was happy with the quality of the parts and service we received, and we'll probably be back next trip to have the brakes serviced. Over the last 11 years, it's been good to see Cowboyak City grow and to have the expanded goods and services that it now offers. It's not a one-size-fits-all proposition any longer. With the new mall came more people, and with more people, more businesses, restaurants, and job opportunities. I remember the days when very few privately owned cars plied the roads here. Now there are definitely more cars than there are jeepneys. This all brings me to the topic of maintenance in the Philippines. Whether it be vehicle maintenance or home maintenance, it doesn't matter. With automobiles, many times road conditions are not the best, and vehicles can pay a heavy price over time. It's been 10 years since we purchased our Mitsubishi, and we have made every effort to keep it in good operating condition, which means regular and preventive maintenance. Many times foreigners might purchase a used vehicle here in the Philippines and in reality are likely getting a vehicle which has been abused and neglected. Flood prone areas, buyers beware. Just take a look at how most locals drive their vehicles over these bad roads without any respect for their vehicle. None. I would be hard pressed to purchase a used vehicle here unless I could be certain of its past driving history and maintenance records. One of the benefits of living here in the Philippines is the idea that labor costs are so low and affordable that nobody should be that kariput about maintaining their cars or trucks or their housing for all that goes. But here in the Philippines, maintenance is a very low priority. And my thoughts here are that when people build a house or purchase that new vehicle, they are likely stretched to the max on their income. It's the same with many businesses and the very reason most air conditioning systems function poorly. They are not maintained. 
It's not just the people who don't have money for maintenance either. Here's a prime example of how maintenance is such a low priority here in the Philippines. The Siriaco Hotel and Resort here in Calbayag City, which opened in 2013 and has been in operation for over 10 years, obviously has a decent cash flow, but yet maintenance has been severely deferred. These pictures I took were from 2022, and to see the neglect that this once new and gleaming building has been subjected to is just mind-boggling. Today it's not in much better condition, but I did notice that during this trip home, maintenance is finally being addressed. A little too late in my book, and unfortunately, it will likely substantially multiply the cost of restoration for this company. In Guam, labor and shop costs are pretty much in line with the Western world. So many of us guys take on the smaller projects ourselves in order to save money. Personally, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty from time to time, especially if I can save a few bucks. I mean, what else have I got to do to stay busy? Make videos? Many times in the Philippines, I will find myself taking care of maintenance projects around the house. Not to save money per se, but to ensure that the job gets done to my satisfaction. If you are new to the Philippines, there is something that you will learn eventually, that many workers here are a jack of all trades but very few are masterful. I'm not saying there are no good tradesmen here, but you just need to learn to separate the chaff from the wheat, so to speak. And sometimes if you want something done right, you just gotta do it yourself. In the Philippines, I take full advantage of trying to stay ahead of things before they go bad, and it's very affordable to do so. The way I look at it means Taking care of business now means less headaches in the long run and more disposable income for pizza and beer. I uh, was visiting a, uh, an online forum this morning. You guys were talking about uh, maintenance, home maintenance, and buying parts. So one guy was mentioning that he uh, he was looking for a sink. He was doing a remodel in his house and looking for a sink. He didn't know where to find it one. Everybody started warning him about quality of parts. And uh, a lot of the commenters were saying, yeah, don't buy any parts here. They're all cheap. Well, and then one guy says, well, all the same parts are made in China. And this, all the parts that you buy in the U.S. are made in China. But there's a difference. Um, a lot of the stuff that is shipped to the United States is, uh, is constructed or manufactured to different standards. Um, but uh, all the Chinese made stuff in the States is uh, usually a, di a better quality than what you can buy here in the Philippines. It's all based on uh, manufacturing process, the requirements for importing stuff into the United States, and price points. The quality stuff that you might find in the States that is Chinese made uh, you would never sell it here because most Filipinos can't afford those type of price points. The manufacturing market for the Philippines is uh, the market here adapts to the lesser quality because of the prices. Um, my biggest problem is with chrome. And I think everybody has the same problem with chrome. Stainless goes by different grades. And there's, uh, there's like over a hundred grades of stainless steel and the, uh, the most common is, I think, the 300 series, 304, 316, 330, uh, 330 being the high, one of the higher grades. Uh, it might even be this, the 316 and 330 might be the grade that's considered marine grade stainless. Uh, it just hardly ever rusts. Lower grade stainless will rust. But the problem here is, is uh, I mentioned before, is chrome plated stuff. Take uh, my little outdoor bathroom for example. Yeah. You can see the stainless steel braided water line. It's uh, pretty rusty. And the fit, of course the fittings will rust. Uh, everything, all the chrome plated stuff here as you can see it's uh, it will tarnish. This here has already started to rust. Um, and even the hands on the toilet, you can see how it's all pitted 
And the chrome, the chrome plating here is uh, of really inferior quality, but it's what Filipinos will buy. Now here's an example of inferior quality. We bought this uh, deep sink in Cebu, well maybe 10 years ago. But the heat and humidity, it just uh, discolors the, it's, it's a plastic tub, but it discolors the, the material. Uh, but as far as stainless steel goes, we, I had these locally made by a, uh, a local craftsman. And I made them use the best stainless steel that we had. I installed these maybe four years ago, five years ago maybe. And uh, there's no, no rust on these at all. Uh, and it cost me, it probably cost me uh, dollars, probably about $20, 30, 20 to $30 dollars for this thing. I mean, I actually have two of them made, one for here and one for in the house. But uh, if you find the good quality stuff, it will last, but you're going to pay for it. Now, believe it or not, this rack here, it's all rust. It will go out with the trash one of these days. Lighting ain't the best here, but um, the one thing I've learned with uh, doing maintenance on this house um, we moved in 11 years ago and uh, most of the chrome plated stuff that we uh, had originally is all gone. Some stuff I get left but it needs to be replaced. But you learn over time to find the better quality stuff. Um, like our air conditioners. Uh, one of my previous videos, that was one of the first assessments I made here was to replace this main air conditioner here. Um, I thought maybe it was failing. Well, it wasn't failing. Um, the compressor would go off and stay off for quite a while and it would come back on. So I thought maybe something was happening with the compressor. What I realized is that uh, when you got low voltage, which we've been experiencing a lot here, uh, it goes from 220 to about maybe 200, 198. Uh, the compressor will kick off. And it won't come back on until the voltage or the you know until the voltage has been restored. Just the fan will run, but it'll run at a lower speed. Uh, and I'm, you know the other side of that coin is the voltage uh, fluctuations here. Does it destroy uh, appliances and equipment and stuff? I'm sure it does. Um, but we have uh, on most of our major stuff. We used to have voltage regulators, AVRs, on everything. Um, two of our AVRs have actually burned out, probably because of voltage spikes. Uh, now we just, everything is, is, like I said, everything's 11 years old. And it's still running on its own without any voltage regulators. So uh, when it fails, we'll replace it. But I'm not going to get in any hurry and replace my, my air conditioning system until I have to. Um, just the way it is. There's probably one important thing I forgot to mention. And that's uh, living within a stone's throw from the ocean doesn't help out a, a lot with anything metal. Uh, we we live maybe less than 100 meters from the water's edge, and during the Habaga or the southwest monsoon, when the winds are blowing directly off the water this way, this direction, and when the surf gets really heavy, the uh, the air is very heavily laden with salt and it gets on everything. My gates, my fence spiking, my bicycle, my toolbox, everything that's metal exposed to the outdoors will rust. So my advice, move inland, unless you have a lot of money. Now here's something that I recommend. Um, you always get the, uh, the best quality that you can find. These are, uh, I put floor drains in every one of our wet areas. Uh, all three bathrooms have floor drains. But what this is, you see, if you look at it closely, it's got a, a bell shaped cup on it. That cup, the edge of the, the rim of this cup, right here, fits into this. There's a little trough. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. There's a trough in here. And when there's water in that trough, this rim sits in that water trough 
and mosquitoes and flies and whatever might be in your lines can't get through because it's a it's, it's like a moat they can't get through the moat now what happens most times is that water dries up within days um, you can fill it up and it, two days later it'll be dried up uh, an old guy told me one time the best thing to do is fill that little trough with vegetable oil and well we just got back so uh, I have not put any vegetable oil on it yet but we're getting a few mosquitoes coming up through there but once I put vegetable oil in there it will last probably the length of our stay here uh, water won't last but a couple days but that's what these traps are designed to do keep bugs and insects from coming out of the sewer or the septic tank or wherever and uh, coming up into your bathroom The gist of this video, make sure you have enough money for maintenance. The cockroaches, they're everywhere.